Crackers' anti-pasty played club domino this week, giving Torontonians their first glimpse of the new English punk scene. There had been some concern locally about the band's arrival since their brand of rock and roll is notorious for attracting violent audiences. are not contemporaries of the notorious Sex Pistols. They have replaced the Sex Pistols as the new heroes for the young English working class. However, they do share the anger and the ideals of the original punk bands. erupted in a series of riots sparked by a rock concert in Brixton, a predominantly black area of London. Racism, unemployment and inflation have been blamed for the violence. We want jobs! We want better opportunities! We are frustrated and we are fed up! What is particularly interesting is that England's angry young punks have become the torchbearers for those who are oppressed. They play protest music in much the same way that Dylan sang about injustice back in the 60s. We asked Auntie Pasty if they could understand the violence that had taken place. There's no other way out except to, to distort things and get yourself heard. Because, like, uh, no one listens to you, the councillors wouldn't listen to you, and the police definitely wouldn't listen to you. And, and it's, you know, it, it had to happen. Mm -hmm. And uh, because it's happened, people are putting money back into sort of inner city areas. And that. Why does the music always come to the foreground? Because of... music in England is much more important, I think. It's people uh, people know, like, like yeah. rock and roll and like music, and that is, it's just entertainment. It's just like a circus out here. It's just like just like going to the ballet or something, but in England, it, music's about people's feelings and that. Like, out here, it's just entertainment. I mean, what you get is rubbish like Germany and foreign and sticks in Boston. And like, quite frankly, those groups shouldn't be allowed. So that's disgusting. <laughs> well, it was like, like, pictures can't come very disgusting now. Yeah, they're horrible. <laughs> What about the bands that you really, you know, support? The bands that you think really do have something important the to say? The Clash. Hmm. What about the older people in the community? I mean, how do they regard you? I mean, obviously... Well, I love them. Do they? <laughs> do they? Well, I had eight. It does everyone. They are. My dad is too hot in music, I think. He likes his old bit. My mum thinks I'm him. handsome. His dad likes us. <laughs> Yeah, my dad likes us. dad likes us. They all come see the shows in Derby. Yeah, when we play at home, they're, they're there. Yeah, they've all got Andy Pasty tattooed on their own. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Well, especially when they see you, you know, cutting a record and going to America and stuff, and they're yeah. really proud of you. Yeah, but my dad still don't matter with that. I'll pack me a pension. <laughs> he thinks he should still be working in a factory. <laughs> that's in a very good job. Yeah, yeah. setting down a nice council house, 2.2 .2 kids and all that rubbish, you know, a nice, <laughs> nice car. And going down the stage could be playing dominoes every night. <laughs> what do you think you'd be, do, be doing if for some reason you weren't musical, if, if you couldn't play your instrument? I'd be in a mental institution. If I, if I couldn't play an instrument, I still can't. <laughs> you can't play. I, ne I never want to play it properly anyway. I think, yeah, I, mean, I, think it's, I think it's dead funny when people, because people really say things like, oh they can't even play anything, so I think it's dead funny that I'm out here and I can't play, but they can play and they're still sitting at home. Yeah. It proves that you don't need O levels and examinations to get places, yeah, and exactly. you shouldn't need them anyway. So were you always conscious of that, like say around the time that you started the band? No, that that wasn't going course, down in your course. life. Things like oh, yeah, yeah, it's, it's been happening. Of course, it's been before happening. I even got on a band. That was like always happening. I mean, that was always like a problem before I even picked a guitar. But up. the thing is, right? <laughs> because when you get older. You realise these things. When you're a kid, like, you yeah, everything, everything's too. given to you on the plate. Mummy and Daddy are looking after you, yeah. Bed's given to you, everything's given to you on the plate, you don't realise. Then when you get older, and you travel around, you see how other people are in, like, you begin to realise it's like a big education on you. And like, well, there's two alternatives. You can, like, pick up a bomb, or you can pick up a guitar. 
and I, I think I believe in like the power of sort of, like the spoken word is like stronger than a bomb, you know, because a bomb just hurts people. But like if you can communicate with your words, you're on top of them, aren't you? You're on the same level. Aren't you ever worried that crowds could get out of control at your concerts? I mean, people they, they, do they crazy things. Them, they do sometimes, yeah. So what but, do you do? Well, we don't mind. As long as no one actually starts fighting. When they start fighting, fighting that just shit. disgusts us. We just go and right. you never see it or hear of us again in, in the town. Has that ever happened where you have yeah. to walk yeah. up the stage? Yeah, we just quit. It's fine. In Holland, so we've done it once in London. Like, you know, if people start fighting, we just disappear because it's just... There's no point. What do you think it is that makes them do that? Do you think it's like something about the music might incite no, them? Something about the no, energy? They want to show off. They, they say, they, I think they're a bit jealous that there's a band up there take, stealing the show. No, I reckon some people, when they get together, get a kick out of hurting other people that aren't in the big gang, you know what I mean? All right, the, the guys that start fighting that, if, if, like, if like, we walk down on our own past them in the street and they're on their own, they won't do a thing, but... Because they get with their mates and everything. People are reckoning to their good luck to sort of do and keep them, it's not. It's pathetic. Fears of any major incident of violence at Andy Pasty's concert were unfounded. And although it was an evening of body slams and lots of bruises, only one member of the audience was ejected for fighting. I got in a fight, so I had a good time. But with the bouncers at the front, and they pushed everybody back, so everyone everyone gets their own movement together, so they go back and forth or whatever, but the bouncers pushing everybody back, then they were sort of like opposing everyone, so everyone just started getting on each other instead of going together, so it made it, make it so great. I think this show was about, I think it was great, you know, I think it was absolutely magic, like, too bad about the violence. I lost my shirt and everything, but it was great. It was for a good cause. It's about time Toronto understood what's going on. Like, what do you think? They were the best I set. It's the best I've seen. What do you think? It was a good concert, yeah. I think it was great. These ladies are from Sweden, and I'm proud of them. I love them. You know, it's just okay. If you're in England, uh, what was going on here? It's not nothing, it's nothing new or anything. It's just, you know, the bouncers don't want everyone on the stage drinking all the monitors and that. It was nothing. It wasn't like modern. It was really good. It's just, with the long hair rockers in Toronto, they can't get in this. They'd rather smoke dope with this ACDC and let's up them. So, yeah. It was brilliant. I've, you play better at the Lyceum in England, but it was really good for a little place like this. Uh, what did you think of, uh, you know, like, the things like the bouncers, I thought they were a bit heavy tonight, you know, do you think they're a bit heavy? They're a little bit heavy, but I ain't as heavy ones as, as the ones in England. <laughs> Speak clearly. <laughs> I said they ain't, they ain't as bad as the ones in England. Uh, like, take the places like the Lyceum, they just kick your head in for no reason at all. You're gonna, you're gonna print, you're gonna, you're gonna quote that? Uh, I'll ask somebody else. I'm gonna, follow me. It's Ronald Reagan. I've got one, I've got one, I've got one. She's on, she's on TV. What did you think of the gig tonight? It was really good. It was really good. Why did you like it? I mean, what, so was it, was it, uh, most, uh, was it any different from any other gigs you've seen or was it just really good because she was pissed and you just enjoyed it or what? It was really good because it was really fast and loud and, and the crowd really liked it and I thought it was great. It's great. That's what I like to hear. This is Martin Roper who's on the spot. What club are we at? The new music, Kim Carnes, Tina Turner, more from Rod Stewart, Joy Division, and more. Yeah.